Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the Name of the Game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, the impact of rising interest rates, part two in our series on the residential housing market with real estate expert, Mike Bodine. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks, Steve. Interest rates. Now, well, they've been flat for a long time, okay? And let's just be honest. If you didn't get in on the 3.5% fixed interest rate, 30-year mortgage, right? That was out there for a long time. So we only have ourselves to kind of blame here, right? It was down there for a long time. But in retrospect, we're still under 5, which in the big picture is quite, quite reasonable. You know, uh, Steve, you and I have been around a long time. Yes, I'm sorry to say We that. remembered 17% 30-year fixed oh mortgages in the early 80s. Yep. Okay. Why did that happen? It happened because of inflation. Mm -hmm. Why are rates going up now? It's inflation. So as inflation goes up, rates are going up. If you look at this, even though we maybe somebody didn't get in at 3.5%, at 4.5%, getting into the market, and I'm very conservative, but at this time, at 4.5%, this is a good time to get into the market. Mm -hmm. Because you're, we may look back at 4.5% and say, you know what? Boy, I'm kind of kicking myself mm -hmm. because I was thinking 4.5% was too high, and now it's 8%. Well, are you suggesting, though, that we've kind of the new floor, which used to be a year and a half, two years ago, 3.5, that new floor could be 4.5? Well, it could very well be kind of the... Uh, the flashpoint that I see where we could, you know, where it might have an effect. Because right now there is no mm -hmm. effect on the more on home sales, at least in the Phoenix area right because now. Because of interest rates. Because of the interest rate, correct. Okay. We're seeing, we're seeing uh, uh, home sales uh, heading still upwards. So it's, I don't think it's going to have uh, much of an impact until maybe we hit 5%. Mm -hmm. And then even that at some point, as we've seen in history, mm -hmm. There, then people get used to that for a while, mm -hmm. and then even then, as they see it, maybe starting to go back up to six percent. Mm -hmm. Because if you can tell me what inflation is going to do, then maybe we can talk about what interest rates are going to do. Well, I can only tell you from the interest rate point of view, from the financial services side, as we know, we've seen steady upticks in the five-year annuity rate. Think about that. I want to shift gears for a moment because we're talking about interest rates. It's not just one interest rate. There's a lot of ways to purchase a mortgage. So why don't you walk me through the 30, the 15, any arms that look good, and talk about the disparity between these. Because sometimes I thought when you have a shorter arm, it should not be as costly. I thought it would be the cheap way out, but you said no. Well, uh, it's called pricing, and, and that will vary based on the day. For example, today, uh, according to bank rate, the uh, you know across the board, nationally speaking, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 4.3 percent, mm. and then you have uh, for a 15-year fixed, you have 3.75 percent, mm. and then for a 5-1 arm, you have 4.1 percent. Mm. The, the surprising thing is that there's a 10-year fixed product. And most people nationally, uh, av in, in average, do not spend uh, 10 years in their home, especially in Arizona. We're mm -hmm. about six to seven years is, is the Arizona average. Mm -hmm. And the 10-year fixed right now is at 3.65%. And it doesn't really make any sense. Why should that be less, for example, than, the, uh, than a 5-1 arm? Well, I'm thinking if you're if I heard you correctly, why would anybody do a five one arm if I have three six five for ten? Unless somebody is going to be in a home for a short period of time, nobody mm -hmm. should, in my opinion, nobody should be in an adjustable rate. Period. They shouldn't be. Should not be. But how many people you just said if we're move, most people are moving. I hopefully I'm not, but but uh, most people are moving. Should they be looking at a fix or an arm then? Under these conditions, I, if, if people are looking to stay in their home at least five years, they are still, I think, better off considering the risk to be in a fixed rate product, especially maybe you're thinking, you oh, know, I'm thinking maybe five, seven years. Well, then right now, the pricing for a 10 year fixed at 3.65 percent is unbeatable. Well, I don't understand if I if that rotation of people moving in within a 10 year frame which is reasonable. I mean, if we're looking at 365, I mean, the, the, remember, we're getting out to the 10-year rate. The treasuries aren't there yet, but we're seeing other rates that are out there in corporate America and high uh, investment-grade bonds that they're doing. So uh, that, that's a shocker to that 10-1. So are, is that what you're 
sales. You are involved in this day in and day out. Is that what people are looking at? Pricing is a matter of which day you're looking at it. That's why mm -hmm. people have to really be up on what interest rates are, having a good mortgage lender to be able to help them on almost a day-by-day -day basis. If they're Once they're uh, about ready to lock into a rate, what's the pricing look mm -hmm. like for a particular product? But I remember back 10 years ago, and this is a caveat to this 10-year fixed, is a number of my friends, we put in, they put in, went into a 10-year uh, adjustable. Mm. It was fixed for 10 years. And of course, uh, at the time, uh, we were in a market that was, uh, uh, you know, it, it had ballooned. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, what happened at the peak of the market, so people are buying homes at the peak of the market. And yes, they had 10 years. But in one case of a friend that we just closed on his house, we had to do a short sale because he was $250,000 underwater. Unbelievable. And that was over 10 years. So if you really, and, and had they had a 30-year fixed at that time, which maybe was about a half percent difference, they could still be in that home today. So there is a big warning here. That it's, it's a ten, that 10-year lock at 365 is a pretty good number. But you have the risk that if you got caught in a bad sideways market, like we described in 2008, uh, that could be a problem. So buyer beware. There's a yes, caveat here. That's right. There's a caveat. Okay. So, but in your, in your, uh, be, the behavior of clients today, are they doing, are they taking, are they, are they kind of risk adverse or are they sitting there with a 30 year lock or no, they're looking at the 10. 30 year fixed. 30 year Pretty fixed. Pretty much across the board. Chris, across the board. Now, now, having said that, we've only seen this rise in, in plus 4% range mm -hmm. recently here. So now that might change. It's mm -hmm. going to depend on what people are thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm still, you know, at least up until the 5% range, my encouragement to people is still, why wouldn't you still do a 30-year fixed? Okay, now let's just, let's just assume, and I know we're talking about the United States government here, so assumptions are not always a good thing to do. But, uh, you know, we heard rumors that, you know, we might get two one eighth bumps before the end of 2018. Okay, so let's just say that happens. So we're, we're, we're gonna be sitting there at at least a 25 basis point push by the Fed. So if we got up to that number, we'd still be around four and a half to four, six, five. Well, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, where I, I don't see rates that actually change that much based on that, mm -hmm. it's always gonna be on the inflation fear. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if, if those basis points are moving up because of inflation fear, then yes, mm -hmm. you'll see that. But everyone's looking at uh, what's inflation going to do. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then mortgage rates react accordingly. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the, the government wants to keep inflation down because they have to mark to mark Social Security benefits for the seniors. So they don't want to pay any more inflation than they have to right. on a tight uh, social program that already has economic issues as uh, today yeah. so if i'm looking at if i'm looking at this i could be at anywhere between four and a half like you said we're, if we're still under five that's a good i mean historically that's a great number all right so interest rates so we we have a i kind of like the idea if you really thought you were really a mobile person you have a history for this you think you can live with the possible downturn that we experienced in 2008 that 3.65 10 year 10 year arm i mean that's a great fixed rate it is a great fixed rate. But you're really measuring that off of another 60 basis points or 55 basis points to lock in at a 30 at 4.3. Right. Okay. So when you're sitting there, does the age of your client matter when we're talking about this? Certainly. So, okay. So seniors a little different than maybe uh, young kids uh, starting out? Yeah. Uh, folks, especially like my age, they're entering, they're going into their 60s there. They're now looking mm -hmm. at if they're buying, not all of them are, mm -hmm. but if they're looking to buy, they're looking to, for this is going to be their last house. I've heard about that. Yes. <laughs> I'm with you on that, Mike. Okay, listen. So interest rates right now, we want to, if you're going to play and you're going to lock in for a long time, this seems to be the time right now. And if you're a buyer today, sorry about that. The price may not be exactly what you want, but there's good, still things good out there, especially like mm -hmm. in our market, anything under 200,000 is moving pretty good. Uh, it's almost getting to the point where it's non-existent. Well, but this, so we've almost sold yeah. out that whole demographic. Very much so. And when stuff comes on the market mm -hmm. there, then it lasts for days. There's bidding wars. You can have eight to ten offers on a property. Above there. the line you asked for. Yes. Wow. Above the asking price. Yes. Wow. 
Well, listen, don't forget to watch our next segment on renting or buying a home, part three in our series on the residential housing market. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. In this case, you're a real estate agent. Don't go it alone. You need a real estate agent. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Oh my-